Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples on another balmy Florida day. You know, I understand it may be snowing up north. That's fine. I feel for you guys. I know it kind of sucks, uh, but that's not going to stop me from complaining about the humidity down here. It's just not. I mean, I get that I can walk around in shorts, that uh, it's fairly mild weather, and probably some of you would like to have it, uh, at least for the moment. But again, uh, truck on down here in July and August and see what you think. Uh, see how it goes for you then. I don't think you're going to like it. Why am I here? You know, I ask myself that all the time. I ended up here. <laughs> this is where I know. I've tried to get away a few times, but it's never happened. So, uh, am I a fan of Florida? Yeah, in some ways. You know, I do like it here for a variety of reasons. I do like fishing, for instance, although I understand uh, somewhere up north you can fish. But uh, otherwise, you know, the weather is just an absolute misery until the good stuff rolls around. But uh, in the sake of, uh, for the sake of uh, keeping the peace, I'm going to tone down the weather reports for the moment and move on to cars and birds and goats. Uh, goats haven't seen anything of them. Uh, they haven't been around. I can't confirm their status as living or dead. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say dead, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, there hasn't been any goat meat on offer, so uh, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, birds, after that woodpecker close call yesterday, I've heard them around, but um, uh, none have come too close, so that's not a bad thing. And today I have another low pressure car. I have a 1979 Pontiac Bonneville uh, four door sedan. I believe it's a Brome, although I get a little bit hazy on some of these things. Uh, uh, the Brome may have been an option package that this didn't have, but I don't think so. I think this is very technically a Brome, uh, so I'm going to continue that way. Uh, it is a B body platform from GM, uh, probably the most successful of the original downsized platforms. People did seem to like it uh, for a variety of reasons and uh, you know truly a rare success story it came out at eh, the Panther platform the world famous Panther platform from Ford came out uh, at a similar time but was not as immediately beloved uh, as uh, these B body cars were uh, they also did hearken of the misery that was to come because they went cross-platform. Uh, you had B-bodies from, you know, basically this uh, Pontiac Bonneville was very much like the Oldsmobile 88, uh, which was very much like the uh, Buick, um, I don't know what the hell is it, uh, oh, for the love of God. You know, I'm telling you, it's just one of those, uh, one of those things. Uh, what the hell was the Buick? I know the uh, Oldsmobile was the 88. Uh, the Sabre. <laughs> you know, they are a little bit forgetful. And, uh, you know, they were all basically the same with some variations in styling. Uh, was it enough to keep people uh, loyal to their brands? Yeah, probably not so much. But uh, this was still a pretty big car, uh, even if, you know, it's shorter than the car that it replaced by a significant amount and probably almost a thousand pounds less. Yeah, it did weigh in at close to 4,000 pounds, but uh, that was a big uh, difference over uh, what had preceded it. Uh, but look, to set the stage, and okay, here's the deal. I did a 78 Pontiac Bonneville Brome the other day, uh, maybe a few weeks ago, and I went through the history of Pontiac. I got into the B-body stuff. You know, mostly it was focused on the coupes, but yeah, they're close enough. So uh, again, the pressure is off. Uh, I'm not going to really have to get into it, but what I'd like to do is set the stage for 1979 uh, to understand what the world was facing because, uh, you know, the other day I mentioned that 93 was kind of a really boring year, and I think it was. Some poor guy in the comment section said, hey, I was born in 93. Well. May you live in exciting times. Uh, 79 was not boring at all. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of interesting shit happened, and that set the stage for cars like this. Uh, it was a very good year for dictators. Uh, you've got the Ayatollah Khomeini. He comes to power in Iran. Uh, you've got Saddam Hussein. He comes to power in Iraq. And uh, Idi Amin, well, maybe not such a good year for him. He got booted out of Uganda in a very unpleasant way. Uh, so uh, that was all going on. Oil prices were through the roof because of the shit going on in Iran. Uh, gas was as much as like 86 cents a gallon, so that really, I'm sure it went up a little bit more than that, but that still freaked people out. Uh, Three Mile Island, New York, <laughs> I know that's uh, 
part of the scoop. Uh, the Russia, USSR, they invade Afghanistan. Uh, I'm telling you, man, a lot of crap went on. Uh, the first British nudist colony was established, and then when people got a glimpse of it, they quickly ruled it. No, they didn't. They let it stay. Uh, but uh, so the Brits, they're getting together with their nudist colony. Uh, China got their one uh, child policy going, something we should probably get going here. Uh, Skylab crashed to Earth, uh, mostly in the Indian Ocean because of a controlled re-entry, uh, but a little bit of it made it into Western Australia. Uh, a girl named Brenda Ann Spencer in San Diego uh, took her rifle and shot two teachers and uh, eight kids. The eight kids lived, but they were wounded. The two teachers died. She shot them from a house across the street from the school, and uh, when they arrested her, she asked why she did it, and, uh, and frankly, what I think is one of the great all-time answers for such things. Uh, said she didn't like Mondays, and then of course that became a Boomtown Rat song. Uh, it snowed in the Sahara for uh, 30 minutes. You know, I guess that's not something that happens very often, although uh, I suppose we'll hear about it more and more. And uh, then the uh, YMC, uh, YMC, the YMCA did sue the village people uh, for that uh, song, which I guess they found unpleasant. But by far the most newsworthy item from 1979, Jimmy Carter, President of the United States, was attacked by a rabbit uh, while fishing. This vicious, deranged rabbit went after him, attacked him. It was harrowing for the poor guy. Uh, it became a, a pretty big news story. And even though people laughed at him a little bit, I have to say, I think this entirely proves my point and, and makes the point of the things that I've been saying for quite some time. Uh, so keep an eye peeled for those things. They're not all friendly, fuzzy, furry. You you know, sometimes they're all teeth, fangs, and ears coming at you, and uh, you got to be pretty careful. Uh, anyway, this was the last full-size Bonneville until 2000. Uh, the Bonneville went through, uh, Pontiac went through all these weird changes, uh, of course, before they were uh, killed in, I don't know what, 2009, 2010. And real shame, actually, to see that happen. Uh, really don't think it had to. But uh, anyway, so this was the last full-size one for a long time. It was replaced in 81 by a mid-size Bonneville. And then the Parisienne, which was basically a clone of the Caprice Classic, even closer than this thing is, uh, took over from uh, the Bonneville and full-size duties. And that was essentially a Canadian model. Uh, in Canada, this Bonneville was known as the Laurentian for uh, reasons that, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I don't really care, uh, but it's for reasons that I don't uh, entirely know. Uh, you know, it was only made for a few years, four-year model run for this, uh, 77 through 81, despite a really big investment. And, uh, you know, other B-body sales kind of boomed, but I don't think the Bonneville did that well. Uh, even Smokey and the Bandit 2 with Jackie Gleason driving a Bonneville police car uh, didn't help him a whole lot. Uh, <sighs> You know, to get into this specific one for a minute, I bought this a while back. It actually has taken a long time to get this car. Uh, I bought it in Colorado uh, in a very remote location, uh, sight unseen. It was very difficult to get it shipped. That took a very long time. And when I saw it, when I saw the photos, I thought that could be the ugliest car that I've ever seen. And it's so, I mean, a quadruple green Pontiac Bonneville from 79 with fender skirts. And, and in some ways, it's the most beautiful car that I've ever seen. So, I mean, I don't know if it's like that thing I talked about with Dalton, with the weird little deranged and retarded puppy that, you know, you sort of get used to seeing, so uh, you grow an attachment to it. If I have something like that going with this car, or if it is truly an attractive vehicle, it had a green bug screen on the front, put on by its original 212-year-old owner, and, uh, you know, I think it might look better without it, but I didn't want to take it off. I thought it just gave it that uh, little bit of, uh, you know early 80s, late 70s uh, credibility that, uh, that it craved. Uh, you could also get it in a coupe, which again, I'm going to link to that video uh, in the description of this one. We had a, a 78 coupe up until recently. Uh, nice car, and uh, the coupes I thought were pretty interesting B-bodies. Um, you know, again, Willow Mist Green on top over Jade Stone Green Metallic on the bottom uh, with uh, the two-tone going into the roof <laughs> in a variety of ways. Lots of chrome trim, lots of stainless trim, uh, belt uh, molding down the side, uh, wire wheel covers. 
You know, I think I really would have liked this car if it had those Pontiac Rally two wheels. It actually might have become clearly attractive at that point. It might be the wire wheel covers that are making it sketchy for me. Uh, but uh, either way, I think they do look pretty nice. And this thing is such a survivor. So, uh, all right, I've got my glasses fogging up again. I can't see anything. I can't even see the viewfinder. So I'm going to pause it for a second and uh, get my shit together here. And then we're going to keep going. All right, so that's a little better. At least they can see again, although I feel them fogging up. I mean, I don't know if they need wipers on them or if they have some sort of a defrost spray I can put on them. Uh, I know when we go uh, diving, once a year we go down to the Keys and try and get some lobsters, which is getting harder and harder as a 50-year-old guy with uh, <laughs> a smoking habit, you know, diving for those little bastards. They're kind of fast. I understand up in Massachusetts you have to... Uh, catch them by hand. I couldn't even imagine that. At least down here we get a little stick in a net, uh, which still seems next to impossible, but uh, catching them by hand, uh, not a chance. Plus the ones up there have claws. Uh, Florida's are naturally declawed, which is kind of nice, but um, anyway, I digress. Uh, without, uh, you know, again, having done the history of this car with the uh, uh, that coupe a while back, I got free to just jump right in, so let's do that. We're going to start inside the trunk. <laughs> this car, I'm telling you. <sighs> so there's that weird uh, Pontiac flower uh, emblem, which frankly nobody has explained to me yet. Um, I don't know why they're using that. Maybe it's a sunburst or something, but uh, anyway, there goes Peter to ostensibly feed the goats. Who knows if that's true? Uh, obviously, being a B body, it has a huge trunk, uh, full frame, body on frame. Uh, this is a big sucker, and you get a trunk to match. Uh, I'm sure it came with a spare tire cover. I don't know it for sure, but it probably. I can't believe Pontiac was that much cheaper than Cadillac, uh, but maybe. Who knows? Either way, it's got a spare tire in there. It's actually bolted down correctly with the jack behind it, uh, which is something of a miracle. And uh, the chances of Dalton having actually checked pressure in the spare tire, I would put it one and 12,000. Uh, so um, yeah, hopefully we don't get a flat. Uh, anyway, everything nice and proper under there. Very, very clean. Very well kept. Uh, when I first saw the car in Colorado, I thought, Colorado, it's snowy, it's rusty, it's going to be a horrible place to buy a car. And uh, then discovered that Colorado is not considered a rust state. Uh, presumably they don't use salt on the roads or uh, some such. So uh, underneath this thing is pretty spectacular and uh, there's no rust in any of the jams or anything else. It's all a very nice rust-free car. Uh, they do have this flip-down license plate for uh, where you get the uh, fuel, which I think is quite cool. Uh, there's the original jacking instructions. We can all use those uh, on the bottom and uh, everything nice and lovely inside the trunk. Uh, very Spartan if you put any infants in there, but I do guarantee you they're not getting out. Uh, this thing's even old enough. There was no federal uh, guideline that had to have a little interior release for the trunk so uh, this is one of the good ones you put someone in this trunk they're staying in there there you see the Bonneville script on the back and the uh, uh, Bosch Bosch I don't even know how to pronounce it out of Salida Colorado original dealer sticker still on the back fighting mist this morning as well let's have a look under the hood Okay, so this was the last series of Pontiacs that had Pontiac motors, although not in 79. Uh, up until 78, you could get Pontiac uh, 400. I think 77 might have been the last year of the Pontiac 350. Uh, then Pontiac came out with the 301 engine, which really wasn't a bad engine, but it was considered pretty anemic and not really beloved by people because it just didn't have the horsepower, the torque to really motivate the car. Uh, frankly, I thought it was good enough and I thought it suffered a little bit more than it needed to. Uh, but um, And then they turbocharged. If you remember, they put that in that um, 81 trend. They put a naturally aspirated 4.9 uh, in the 79 uh, Trans Am, which again, people who like Trans Ams don't like that engine in that car. Uh, but uh, then they did turbocharge it for uh, 81 and uh, yeah, mixed results on that one as well. 
anyway, in 79, from what I understand, and it does get a little complex for 79 because everything was in a state of flux over this gas crunch and uh, the Ayatollah and the American hostages and Jimmy Carter and all that crap, uh, California with its weird emissions laws. Uh, but I think they did away with the 400 and the 403 by 78. So 79, you had two engine options. Uh, you had the Pontiac 301, uh, which I guess is technically a Pontiac V8. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's part of what continued them being in the car, but not the V8 people wanted. And then you had this, a Buick 350, uh, which is distinguishable from the front-mounted uh, distributor cap. And uh, that's kind of a fascinating engine to make it into this car. It has about that and 160 horsepower, uh, 250, 260 uh, uh, pound-feet of torque, and uh, was the optional 5.7 engine for 1979. Uh, I'm glad this one has it, because when I first got in this car, fired it up, drove it, it ran like a raped ape. It was, it was actually really impressive. Uh, I initially thought it had a Pontiac 350, because I really hadn't researched 79s. Uh, when I found out it was a Buick, I was pretty surprised. Uh, but anyway, very torquey, very nice. It's made into a turbo high dramatic uh, 350 bulletproof transmission, and that that stuff is part of what makes these cars, uh, you know, really liked and beloved. And not to mention the ride quality, which is exceptional. Really, really exceptional on this car. Uh, but uh, anyway, there it is under the hood. Very nice, very proper, and befitting of uh, a true 48,000 mile survivor. See all the underhood padding and stuff is nice. The air cleaner still looks pretty nice. Uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it's, uh, uh, it's obviously uh, just a low mile well-kept original engine bay and uh, that's kind of what you want to see in some of these things. I like the hidden wipers in this too. And I do like the aero shield I have to say. <sighs> the fender skirts. You have to love it. I mean on some of these cars, especially the rusty ones up um, you know in Rustachusetts or Ohio or Rust Belt cars, uh, those are often long gone. I don't know if it's the tabs that hold them in get rusted away or people just do away with them out of tediousness, but uh, it's uh, it's a little bit unusual to see them still on the car. It's mostly just on the survivors now. I also do like those stainless strips down the bottom. Uh, another thing lost to the world, as are the chrome bumpers. And before I get in, uh, I have to give a little bit of a nod to those compartmentalized tailpipes. Tailpipes. <sighs> tail lights, which I think are exceedingly attractive. I really do like the way those things look. And uh, of course that is a Pontiac styling cue that continued on for many years. Uh, from this rear window, I don't know if you can see through there, but the package shelf is a nice shape. Uh, you can certainly tell this car wasn't in Florida getting baked by the sun. Here is my favorite part of the car, and that is the green velour. I mean... <sighs> I am a sucker for green cars. I know some people hate them. In fact, I think most people hate them. Uh, getting into green interiors, you're even going to generate more hate. For me, it generates more love. I love the way this thing looks. Uh, you can see the styling is terrific. Uh, these uh, very classic American design fits three across, no issue. Uh, your Canadians are going to be extremely chipper. And because this was a Laurentian up there, they're already used to it. So they're not going to have to get uh, uh, to uh, accustomed to a new car. Uh, I was shocked that this car had window cranks. Absolutely shocked because it's otherwise pretty loaded with options, uh, which we'll get into. But there they are. So manual windows in the car. Uh, but you can see everything's kind of nice and tight and proper. A little bit of wood trim in there. You know, basically 1970s GM Drek. I mean, cars were getting smaller. Uh, they were cutting a lot of corners to try and uh, save money and save weight to make them more economical. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I, you know, like the way they don't finish the ends of these things and stuff. It's all kind of cheesy, but uh, it's still nice and tightened together on this car. And uh, you can't really blame it for, um, you know, manufacturer shortcuts back in the day when it was new. I mean, the weather strip is nice and original and tight. So uh, anyway, very interesting color in this car. Also like the Pontiac Aero mirrors at the time. Uh, the green theme continues into the front, of course. Uh, absolutely stunning to me. The green dashboard with the acres of fake wood trim. Uh, this skinny little uh, vinyl steering wheel with a mixture of fake wood and green on it. Uh, the uh, door panel, again with the window crank. Uh, a little bit of peeling of the uh, chrome trim there around the door handle and a little bit of uh, wear through on the handle uh, right from where your hand would go. 
Uh, so even in 48,000 miles, if somebody's a little bit rough on it, which uh, obviously this owner was, it does show some wear. Uh, but otherwise, uh, very nice mint uh, original panel with that exception. And the rest of the car shows none of that. Just a little bit over on the uh, passenger side. Uh, does have a power uh, six-way driver's seat. Nice, works good. I love that old GM stuff. I also like that when the door panel's closed, you have to squeeze your hand in like it's a sheet of paper to get down there and move it. Uh, you know, real ergonomic stuff from General Motors at the time. Uh, the uh, passenger seat, uh, it's manual to move back and forth, I think. I'm double check it. But it does have a, a manual recline, which is nice. So, uh, you know, if you want to do a little bit of love making in your uh, Pontiac Bonneville, you can do it uh, in the back seat, or you can just recline the passenger seat, uh, put on a little bit of uh, soothing country music, and you know, have at it. Sounds like Peter's having a little trouble starting his 928. He's digging some of his old cars out of the garage. So, yeah, once it's running, it sounds smooth, but. Getting there wasn't that easy. Right, let's hop in, see what we got. And I'm gonna fire this thing up and get a little AC going so I'm not dripping anymore. Nice standard GM two key ignition system. And look at that thing. I've always liked the 928. A little bit of a redheaded stepchild, but really coming. In. That's the second Porsche he's left in that's had a burnt out taillight. Uh, that 993 from last week had the left side burnt out. This one has the right, so. A little bit of a theme going. I love it. There you hear that big Buick 350 firing to life. Let me get a little bit of AC going here. Uh, I can't believe what a survivor this car is. I mean, it's not mint. It's not concours. It's got a few issues here and there in terms of cosmetics, like the door handle we talked about. Uh, but what a survivor. I mean... I hop in this car, you see 48,000 miles on the clock, you see how clean and nice and original everything is. I, I feel like I'm in a car lot in 1984 and looking at a Bonneville that I need to get to go to work in. I mean, it is just a time machine, this thing. Uh, the horn works. Nice big uh, B-body horn. Uh, Pontiac, I think, historically always had some of the best instrument clusters. Get that fan real low. Uh, they really did. And this one has the full gauge package. So you've got your uh, fuel gauge, your voltmeter, uh, your oil pressure. Zip around there and your water temp and you see how nice the chrome is around the gauges a lot of times That's all scraped away or weird uh, as is the chrome underneath the dash This is often all worn out and tired the vents are all flopping around uh, even this uh, You know 70s style clock works the uh, I don't know if it's digital what they call it. I think digital is when the if you remember those old clock radios where the numbers flipped they were cut in half and they flipped I think that was a true analog air quote digital clock uh, I don't think this is called digital but eh, it's digital in the sense it has digits anyway um, the condition of the car is just a lot of fun it also has a tilt wheel uh, it's got cruise control uh, it's got power locks and uh, it's got, uh, you know, a remote um, driver's side mirror. And I wouldn't even begin to know how you set that. Obviously, you're going to have to have a kid or something uh, move the mirror while you're sitting there. I'm not even going to lean across, roll the window down, start adjusting the mirror, move back, lean over, lean back. I'll be out of shape and out of breath in 10 minutes doing that. So that's absolutely no good at all. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, all the options in this thing. Uh, air conditioning, option. Uh, you got an ashtray down here because everybody smoked in 79, you know, going to the disco clubs. They had plenty of room for plenty of cigarettes. Uh, an AM, AM radio. And here's the exciting and interesting thing, because I didn't even know this existed, uh, or this 8-track. It's an AM radio with an 8-track. And we're listening to solid gold hits from 1973. But I don't know, I mean, it doesn't Frankly, FM come before an 8-track? I mean, isn't the progression of options AM and then AM FM and then AM FM 8-track? So I, this was new to me. I had no concept that you could get an AM AM radio uh, with, uh, with an 8-track in it, but there it is. So I presume it's not even stereo. Uh, it does have four speakers, but eh, there's no AM stereo. Uh, I also do like the way uh, you set the... Um, Let's see the AM radio working. And with ATN on the board, I would be really tempted to take him. 
Um, okay, that's fascinating. And then you set the uh, stations by pulling this out and pushing that in, if you guys remember that. So, I don't know. I just find this thing all very fascinating. Love the green sun visors. The mirror is nice, crisp, and clear. No big decay on any of it. Uh, the radial tune suspension, uh, which Pontiac's had on their cars for some time at this point. Uh, all the, uh, the letters are still raised and nice, as is the Bonneville logo. Uh, the thing's just a real survivor, man. All the illumination works. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a really cool car to drive because it really transports you back in time. I like looking down the hood and seeing that uh, uh, proper hood ornament in front, or sorry, in back of, uh, from this angle, the uh, bug screen and the beauty uh, trim right down the middle of the hood so and that nice smooth 350 Buick engine okay let me get my crap in the car and uh, then we're gonna go for a spin all right let's do it uh, you know I always say I'm bringing my crap with me I apologize for having the stuff everywhere uh, people sometimes ask what the hell is you know what, what are you carrying with you that you actually have to mention it and carry bags around you know, it's a long story, but the shortest version is this. Uh, with New Dalton, and uh, I think I once described in a uh, Buick headlight video, uh, which I'll link to below, uh, why we call him New Dalton. Because when we hired him, there was already a Dalton there. What are the chances? Two mothers who loved the movie Roadhouse. But... Um, and anyway, there's another story to old Dalton, but uh, anyway, when we hired him, he was then becoming new Dalton to everybody. Listen to me ramble, I'm telling you, the COVID whiskey, everything else, and now we're gonna see how bad his windshield is, and I'm just gonna go with it to point it out to him. Yeah, somebody once said his windshields look like he cleans them with a raw chicken thigh, and I think there is some truth to that. Um, Anyway, uh, when you have New Dalton detailing your cars uh, and you bring them home and you go to the photo and video site, you essentially have to re-detail them uh, to get them to some semblance of where you could actually photograph them. So I have to carry a whole detailing kit with me, chamois and sobs and potions and lotions and, you know, all sorts of things to make up for the uh, crap that he either misses or does in a substandard fashion. And that's just why I do love him so much. Uh, and now I find out he is not going to move to Tennessee. I knew this was going to happen. I told you, when you get guys like this, they're like herpes. I mean, they're not going away. They're just going to be with you forever. Uh, you know, they may flare up from time to time and you recognize what's going on. But uh, but anyway, so he is staying. So I have, you know, many, many unpleasant windshields in my future. Uh, but um, that is some of the crap that I have to carry with me in the bag uh, in order to, um, you know, to do what I do here. So uh, the rest of it, I don't know. I, I mean, I have some sort of a neurosis about being somewhere without shit that I probably think I should have. So uh, I definitely need to uh, go to a therapist and get that sorted out. Uh, this being the 350 option, the 350 Buick, it does have a Rochester four barrel carburetor. And I was tempted to flip the uh, cap on the uh, air cleaner when we had it open there before. That was something I did as a kid. Uh, you flip the cap, it exposes the air cleaner element and opens up the uh, uh, the sound of the carburetor and you play like, you know, New York City police cruiser or something or Oklahoma state trooper and uh, you get this real incredible secondary sound uh, from the carbs when you nail it. The woo woo and I absolutely love it uh, because this thing's so original and metered it's, well, you get a little bit of it but man would that be a big howl uh, if it was the, um, uh, Whatever the hell you call it. If, if the air cleaner was flipped and the secondaries were making their noise. Going down the road, this car is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And when you think about some poor bastard who decided he was loyal to Bonneville's, started out in the 60s with these great big 400 plus engines and 70s, and you know, the, this thing came around. He said, ah, it's smaller, but God, does it drive nice? And it's got V8 power. And uh, then all of a sudden you get in the 80s, you've got the this weird little front drive thing, but yeah, the quality feels pretty high, the engine's good. Then you get in the 90s, I mean, the poor dude, by the time he's retiring, uh, he just doesn't want to be in a Bonneville anymore. I mean, you even get into the 2000s and maybe you get some rebadged Australian muscle car. <laughs> 
I mean, I don't know. Pontiac really went haywire. Uh, but uh, this 77 Bonneville uh, was probably the last reasonable alternative to the guys who had grown up with uh, with Pontiacs in the 60s. You know, the Pete Estes and John DeLorean Pontiac, you know, where they were uh, becoming hot rods and the performance division. And, you know, you can kind of see that in the instrument cluster in this car that they kept with it. But man, what a driver, you know, and that's why the B-Bodies did so well. Uh, it, when GM did away with the B-Body, all the taxi guys, all the police cars, everything had to move fully over to Ford and the Panther platform. But uh, while the B-Bodies were going, they really had it over Ford. They really did. They were better than the Panther plan. Yeah, you just have to give it to them. Uh, this was a nice, smooth, lovely riding car uh, that, uh, that really did perform the way people wanted it to. Anyway, this one's going to be for sale at Auto House Naples uh, on the web at autohousenaples.com. You can call them at 239-263-8500. Uh, uh, I don't know if I've got any other cars on the horizon for a video over the next couple of days. If something pops up, maybe. Uh, maybe I do one for Peter on one of his cars or something over at the other channel. Uh, and uh, next week I'll be heading to uh, North Carolina to uh, check out a few cars up there. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but I'll try to get up something anyway uh, over the next few days and uh, before I take off. So anyway, thank you so much for having a look. Really appreciate it, and um, we will see you with the next one. Take care.